Hello, this video is in response to a comment on a video I did about simulating bivariate normal random data. And it's easiest to follow up with another video instead of try to explain it, you know, as a comment to or a reply, you know, to his comment. And so we have uh, two sections, one sort of just to illustrate very simply what's going on and then what I did in the video. So here in case one, we have two variables, Z1 and Z2, and they're both standard normals. And if we let X be Z1 and Y be Z1 plus Z2, then um, it's easy to show that the expected value of both of these are zero. And the variance of X is one, and the variance of Y is two. So then when we look at the, when, when we want to find the uh, correlation between X and Y, um, we first have to find the covariance. So the covariance of X and Y, um, we plug in this, and then um, that's a linear combination so we can break it into pieces. Um, well, the covariance between Z1 and Z2, they're independent, so it's zero. And the covariance of Z1 and Z1, that's like saying the variance, which we said was 1. So this covariance is 1. And so the correlation between X and Y is the covariance divided by the uh, standard or the square root of the product of the variances, which then is this. You know, covariance was 1, variance of X is 1, variance of Y is 2, so this is it. And if you were to run simulations on this data here, that's the correlation, which I think is around 0.7. So now the, the question is, how do we manipulate Z1 and Z2 to make X and Y, you know, normal random variables of the means and the variances we want and also have a correlation of rho? And that's what part two is, is we want to choose, you know, what the means are, what the standard deviations are, and what the correlation between the two are. Well, it's easy to do it for X, or, you know, the first variable that we choose. Um, we take Z, the standard normal, take it times the standard deviation we want, and add in our mean. So when we take the expected value of X, then the expected value of this is zero, so it goes away, and we're just left with the, the mean of x. And then the variance of this, the variance of adding a constant goes away, so we're looking at the variance of this, but the sigma x comes out squared, and then the variance of z1, standard normal distribution, is 1, so that's why we get the uh, variance that we want. If, you know, if we, so we randomize observations from a standard normal take it times the standard deviation we want and the plus the mean now the now the tricky part is why um, what do we need to do well it turns out we need to do this okay um, we need to take um, so this is X that we just generated minus the mean uh, t divided by the, the standard deviation and technically when you, if you were to back solve for Z1, you could just put Z1, but it has to be the same Z1 that you used for this in, in here. So you could just say Z1 right here. And we're going to take it times the standard deviation of Y times the correlation we want. We're going to add in the mean of Y, uh, take it times this. Um, so let's look at the, the mean of, of Y to see if we get the mean that we want. So when we take uh, the expected expectation into this, you know, these constants can be pulled out front and then we're just left with this. Well, the expected value of X is mu X. So this goes to zero. That's a constant, so it stays. And then when we take the expected value into this, the, this constant comes out front and expected value is, uh, Z2 is zero. So that goes away, and we're left with uh, mu y, the mean that we wanted. The variance of y, um, 
So here when we take the variance of this, th this constant comes out squared. And then we take the variance of this. But here we're standardizing it. We're subtracting the mean divided by the standard deviation. So this becomes a standard normal. So the variance of a standard normal is 1. So this is 1. And then the variance of a constant goes away. And then we square this. And that's what we get here. And then we take the variance of Z2. Uh, but it's a standard normal. So this is 1. So we have 1 here and 1 here. So now we have we have uh, y, sigma y squared rho squared. And we have minus sigma y squared rho squared. So those cancel. And then what we're left with is this sigma y squared. So we have generated data with the appropriate means and variances or standard deviations that we want. But now we need to show that the correlation between these two variables is rho, the, what we want. Okay, So if we look at the covariance between x and y, so we plug in x, which is this, and y, which was this long thing. And um, so it's a linear operator, so we can take it in all this. But constants go away in variance and covariance, so we can ignore those. Um, then, when we take the co covariance of this and this piece, Z1 and Z2 are independent, so it goes to zero. So really, we're only interested in the covariance of this piece. And so, um, and when you do covariance, that comes out front, and then this will then this will go out back. Technically, it comes out front either way. But when you're dealing with matrices, my mindset is to take it out the back, take it out the front. And if that doesn't make sense, you can ignore it. But um, So the covariance between this is just the variance, which is 1. And so we're left with sigma x, sigma y, rho. So now when we look at the correlation between x and y, we have the, the covariance divided by the uh, square root of the product of the variances. So when we plug in all our information, you know, the square root of these squares go to just the, the standard deviation. So those cancel, leaving just rho, and we're left with the correlation we want. So this does simulate uh, bivariate normal random variable with the desired means and standard deviation. One note, though, and I'm not sure why I did this in the video. In this step here, um, instead of uh, generating a standard normal, I actually took this into this variable and generated a normal variable with mean zero and standard deviation that. Um, it ends up being 100% the same, but I wish I would have kept it out front just for e easier clarification. But anyway, so I hope that answers your question um, and happy computing. Thanks. Bye.